With the Scotland-Ireland game at Murrayfield, the club fixture programme was reduced, but we do have some live rugby for you, including exclusive footage of the club international match between Scotland and Ireland, featuring Borders players, and that took place on Friday night at Myerside. And also down here, it's a double match, Premier 2 and Border League fixture for Peebles against Haddington. On a typical windy day at the Geitz, Peebles immediately dominated up front and David Payton was once again influential at the number eight position, enjoying a lot of freedom to attack. And when his pack got a heel against the head, he exploited the gap to raise over for Peebles' first try. And the pressure continued with tap penalties from Trevor Keane and Drew Moore, causing all sorts of problems in the Haddington defence, but to their credit, the visitors held out. It looked like James Oakes had gone over for a try, but for some reason the referee disallowed it, but gave Peebles a penalty. But more Peebles pressure led to an inevitable second try by Dan Boltwood, who kicked both conversions to give his team a 14-0 lead. But there was controversy on 23 minutes when David Payton tried to get the ball off Headington scrum half Nick Bell. Bell's teammate Quinton Caulfield took exception and went up to Payton to give him what can only be described as a headbutt. It incensed the crowd and also Peebles skipper Willie Aitken who pushed Caulfield out the way. Well that led to a bit of a brawl but RFU referee John Meredith instead of giving a red card to the Haddington player gave it for some reason to Peebles number five Sandy Smiley who wasn't exactly involved in the action. Dan Botwood led the charge with a number of breaks upfield by Peebles. This was probably the best one from his own try line, linking up eventually with James Oakes. Unfortunately, it came to nothing. But with a penalty apiece, the only scores in the second period, Peebles held on to win by 17 points to three. Our coaches have still run, still in us a belief that we can beat anyone. And I think we've shown that this year that uh, we're just, like I said, a good group of mates. We all want to play for each other. And when the chips are down, we all sort of pull together tighter and... It's really good to see. Hoyk, Melrose and Selkirk all had a day off, so no Premier 1 rugby for them. But in Premier 2, all our local teams played, including Gala versus Jed Forrest. It took place at Riverside Park and reporting for us, the new life member of Gala Rugby Club, Ling Spears. This was a fairly easy win for Gala and they were handed some scores by a Jed side which played well below the standard they've been showing at Riverside Park. The game counted for both the Border League and the Premiership Division 2. Jed blew their chances of promotion with a lethargic display which disappointed their large support. Gala's four tries were all crisply taken by a young, fast and, and swift moving bank division. It was a good game in many places but it had a few uneven moments on the whole gala just deserved the, their win which put them in a strong position in the border league still to come a look at our borders teams in the national and east leagues and also the club international between scotland and ireland in National League One, it was another home win for Berwick at Scremerston against East Kilbride, whilst Hoyt YM went on the road and got a result at Hillfoots. The Eastern League results are on your screen now. Friday the 13th of March will go down as a very proud day for Selkirk players Lee Jones, Gavin Craig and Fraser Harkness, also Scott White and John DL of Melrose, as well as Selkirk coach Kevin Barry, who were all part of the Scotland club side, which took on their Irish counterparts at Myerside. And within minutes, Scotland were ahead thanks to a fine try by Fraser Harkness, with some help from Curry's Ross Weston. Scott White converted before a Barry Keeshan penalty reduced the deficit for Ireland. Then Scott White made it 10-3 with a penalty.
Just before the break, Scott White and his opposite number Barry Keishan exchanged penalties to go into the break all square at 13 all. But you felt with wind advantage, the Scottish boys would fancy their chances in the second half. Scotland started the second period as they did the first, and after some good work by A.J. McFarlane, Ayr's plucky scrum half, the ball was put out wide, and although there was a hint of a forward pass, Fraser Harkness was on hand yet again to bag his second try. White kicked the touchline conversion and a gap was opening up again. But right off Ireland at your peril and back they came with a forwards try taking advantage of a sin binning for Scotland to drive over and close to within two points. Scotland didn't panic and following a typical Harkness kick ahead, pressure was put on the Irish defence and Angus Martin from Boroughmuir, who was voted man of the match, dived over for Scotland's third try. They could have had more points with a series of well put together moves and Damien Kelly was always in the thick of things as they took the game to the Irish. A couple more penalties from Scott White wrapped things up for Scotland and despite not giving up at the end, Ireland couldn't manage any more points and it ended with a win for Scotland by 31 points to 18. Now two tries for you in a Scottish jersey, what about that? <laughs> oh well, it's just an Irish boy asking for it but I'm not giving this one up, eh? no again. <laughs> You never score two for your country all the time, so you know I'll be putting the cupboard. The wife can wash it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> but take us through the first try because it seemed so effortless, really. It was a. No, it was. A, I, I actually thought that you know Ross Weston was superb from eight, and, and I thought he, you know, every time he ran at a ten, he just didn't want to tackle him. And you know, it's one of those you see it every week. You know, just a big eight and an offload, and you know, just the right place at the right time. It seems to be a thing about me. Eh, when it was the same in the second try by with Clapper. It was just another offload out of tackle and. You know, just in the right place at the right time, so I'm not going to complain, I'll take them all. <laughs> you know, I thought, I thought we created quite a lot, you know, we played all the rugby, a couple of you know, poor defensive lapses, let them in for two soft scores, which cost us, you know, and kept it more of a match. And it could have went either way for long periods, but, uh, you know, I felt the way the team was going, we are going to rough it out, and when we got to the second half of the win, got to that ten point lead, it was, it was good. Our scramble defence, you know, Angus at seven and uh, AJ at nine, you know, and their scramble defence, just absolutely brilliant, covering boys. So they never really made that many yards, you know, it was uh, just work rate was unbelievable from the boys tonight. So a night to remember? Oh, definitely, you know, it's one in the bank, you know, it's not often you get to play in Scotland in a Scotland jersey, you know, with the home support that I've came down tonight. It was great when they got behind us and stuff, yeah, really enjoyed it. Finally today, the result of our competition to win a signed rugby ball by the Scotland rugby squad. We asked you, when was the last time Scotland beat England at Twickenham? It was back in 1983. And well done to James Irving from Gala Shields, who will win the Scottish signed rugby ball. Well, that's it for this week. Join us again next Monday for Borders Rugby Roundup.